I will recognize the honorable member for Strathmore Brooks. Well, here we go again, Madam Speaker. I am honoured to rise today to speak as the new member of this Legislative Assembly for Strathmore Brooks. It is truly a privilege to be a member of this great Assembly and to be heir to its traditions, its history and its heritage. I was selected by the people of Strathmore Brooks to be their representative in this House, and I will do my utmost to serve them well. Strathmore Brooks represents what has made Alberta great. The city of Brooks, the town of Strathmore, the county of Newell, and the county of Wheatland are as Albertan as Alberta gets. Its people are enterprising and hardworking. They are rooted in the best of our traditions and our heritage, but they are also forward-looking and not afraid of change. They don't care if your great-grandfather came across the prairies in a wagon or if you landed at Calgary International in a WestJet 737. They do care if you work hard, contribute to your community, and do your best. They are ranchers, farmers, small business people, and oil patch workers. They are the key sectors of our economy in Strathmore Brooks that I will defend every day. I will stand up for keeping taxes competitive on local businesses. No society has ever taxed and borrowed its way to prosperity. It is as true in British Columbia in Ontario during the early 1990s, as it has been in Greece over the last decade. It would be ignoring the evidence to believe that it will be any different here in Alberta today. I was raised in a family where freedom and liberty were the ultimate political values instilled in me. My Oma, Charlotte Fildebrandt, and Opa, Gerhard Fildebrandt, were both forcefully expelled from their homelands and lived under the brutal oppression of socialism and communism in East Germany. I can remember my Oma telling me about working on a farm under Stalin's rule. With the state confiscating most of the wealth produced on the farm, even it was a hungry place to be. They escaped to Munich and then to Canada because they never lived, wished to live with war, with tyranny or socialism again. They lit Wyatt's torch behind them as they left, refusing to be instruments that exist merely for the state's production quotas. They believed that at the root of a free society was the rule of law, where the government is constrained from itself, where the people understood and defended their freedom, and were not willing to bargain it away for comfort or political correctness. Those deep beliefs were passed on to my father, Gerald, and my sister, Samantha, and myself. My mother's side of the family brought with me another set of values, my great-grandmother was a Scottish war bride and, most unfortunately, an old Labour socialist. <laughs> that may be the first and only time I am applauded by the NDP side and not my own members. <laughs> it seems the Fildebrands would live with socialism again after all. <laughs> but she did have some redeeming qualities. She was Scottish. <laughs> From the Scots in the back here. <laughs> My grandparents on that side, Patricia and Gordon Graham, were typical of the people you'll find in the Ottawa Valley where I'm from. Hardworking, community-minded, community and owners of a large stockpile of unregistered firearms. <laughs> They passed on that deep passion for their community and their family to my mother, Kimberly, and my sister and myself. Strathmore Brooks is a place where you know your neighbours, where you know your local policemen and the teachers at your local school, where community matters. One of the most important ingredients to maintaining a strong local connection to communities in Strathmore Brooks is ensuring that residents have access to proper, quality, long-term seniors care. The people of Strathmore have been promised and denied a quality seniors care facility since 2008. They are tired of broken promises. They need a long-term seniors care facility that has access to proper medical services. I want to work with the new government to ensure 
that this long lost promise is finally fulfilled. In Bizano, the Newell Foundation has done incredible work to bring together people from the city of Brooks, the county of Newell, the town of Bizano, and many other community organizations. They have contributed hundreds of hours to putting together a plan for a truly visionary aging and community facility. They seek to give seniors from the region the independence, the choice, and the support that they need. The Newell Foundation and its volunteers have already done the work. All they need is for the provincial government to follow through with the final agreement. I will be reaching out to the ministers for seniors and health to ensure that this community initiative does not fall through the cracks involved in a transition of power. It truly has the potential to become a model for seniors' care in rural Alberta right across this province. Fighting for your constituents involves fighting for specific goals like these, but it also involves fighting for your principles more broadly. Too many people are elected to places like this and forget their principles at the door. This is, to not, this is not to say that we cannot make an honourable compromise in the name of getting a proverbial half loaf of bread, but it is to say that we must never allow re-election to become our only goal. We must stand firm for the reasons that we came to this place. Now, this piece of advice is only meant for my Wild Rose colleagues. My NDP friends' principles are most clearly incorrect, and I will spend the next four years trying to convince them of the error of their ways. I've generally had a healthy distrust of politicians for most of my life. Serving six years with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, I routinely made a pretty good time out of skewering politicians for wasting this and stealing that and generally being a bunch of weak-kneed careerists who would say or do anything just to keep their jobs. Then I started to get to know a group of folks in the previous Wild Rose Caucus. I began to trust many of them, believing them to be on the right side of history, perhaps even friends. Boy, I was wrong. <laughs> I saw every single stereotype of the morally corrupt, self-serving politician confirmed below, before my eyes. I nearly gave up everything to do with public life and democracy, and I nearly even swore off voting. Instead, me and my fellow caucus mates made the decision to prove them all wrong. We stuck to our principles when the going was tough. We refused to do the easy thing. We stood up for democracy and we stood up for conservative values and I will not check those values at the door. I will fight for limited government, for fiscal responsibility, for property rights, for gun rights, for freedom of speech and freedom of association for individual liberty, for the right of the minority to be wrong no matter what the majority might think of them. When my cynicism with politicians was turning towards doing something positive about it and running to represent the people of Strathmore Brooks, I asked my wife, Emma, to keep me grounded. I asked her to never let me become so accustomed to this place, so entitled to my seat, or so blinded by my office, that I would do what some of our predecessors did before us. I asked her to never let me lose sight of why I am here. Others. I will do my utmost to do honour to the electors of Strathmore Brooks, who entrusted me with their representation in our government. God bless Alberta. And God bless Canada. Here, here.